Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Finally recovered after the review of the Hellboy reboot. Yeah, incredibly awful. Not as good as the first two films. Yeah. Plus, I had to take a break. I even did a podcast with my friend Quinn Kiefer Wright yeah, from Inclusion Films. It's been a while since I've last talked to him, but I figure why not? But this time, I had to do it on phone. I'm still waiting for the video to show up on YouTube uh, through his channel, so once it does, I'm going to share it. Um, should be a good one, though, because apparently this is going to be a controversial. I mean, <laughs> but let's not get our hopes up here. However, I was watching Netflix. Um, I haven't watched Netflix in a while. Since the last time I did, I actually watched the two... Nickelodeon specials, uh, Rockles Martin Life Static Clean, and Invader Zim Enter the Florpus, both of which I did review back in August. Uh, but since then, um, my Netflix um, wasn't on, so we had to wait until um, later in September, which is this month, to actually um, put it back on again. We had to change the password and stuff. Yeah, You know how it is. I mean, we have to pay and do all this. Um, so, so after that, um, I didn't get a chance to check out the new um, series. It's a ten episode. It's a ten episode series uh, that's based on the movie, which I'm going to review right now. But I did watch the Dark Crystal: Age of Resistance. Um, I'm only halfway through. But I'm definitely going to continue going on because it's a pretty long series. It takes a while to follow, but so far so good. It's actually excellent. I really enjoy it by far. I just can't wait to see the rest, see what happens. But it's basically a prequel to the 1982 dark um, mythical fantasy adventure, and that is, of course, The Dark Crystal. 1982 um, but the but anyway <laughs> it's really excellent and I'm hoping that um, we do get more I, I thought it was gonna be a sequel though at first you know like it was gonna be like an actual movie at, that takes place maybe as a prequel but but I didn't think it was gonna be a 10 episode series but Starting with this with season one, but I think there will be a season two. Hopefully. So, okay. Well, anyway, um, but I am going to be reviewing the Dark Crystal, as I mentioned already. Um, it's a story about a, a young Gelfling who's on a quest to restore the balance of the world of Fra by finding the the crystal shard that's taken directly from the Dark Crystal that's been cracked spreading into two races of mystics and Skelskis. Now, yes, this was um, created by the master of a puppetry, Jim Henson, you know, who's been best known for giving us the Muppets, joining in with Frank Gauz, along with um, illustrator Brian Frode, you know, who's best known for actually designing all these fairy and dwarfs and of course he did collaborate it with both Henson and Frank Gauz with uh, their next project and which I did review already a long time ago called Labyrinth from 1986 yeah, with the late great um, rock star David Bowie God rest his soul and Jennifer Connelly which her earlier film was Dario Argento's um, horror fantasy classic uh, Phenomena, which at this rate would be called Creepers in North America. Yeah, it's, a, it's also a great film too, um, if you haven't seen it. Um, but this was uh, one of her earlier roles before she got the role in Labyrinth, and then later on she went on to spout a, an extensive career with a lot of films, you know, everything from, from uh, The Rocketeer, to um, Dark City, all the way through 
Alita Battle Angel. <laughs> but of course she was in films like Career Opportunities, Requiem for a Dream, um, among others. Um, but she's always been a great actress. Very beautiful. Um, very uh, attractive, no doubt. Uh, anyway. So, yes, uh, this movie, I just uh, finished watching it uh, on DVD. Unfortunately, I put the DVD back into the cabinet, and I'm having a hard time taking it out for right now because I, I was pretty tired, and I just got up. So, I figure I'm just going to show you this on the review, <laughs> as you can see here. But it's a 2006 DVD that I got. And it has just a few extras here and there. Um, but hopefully someday uh, I will maybe find the Blu-ray or maybe that 4K Ultra HD one that comes with the Blu-ray. Though I heard that one does have some white balance and all that. They did change the colors compared to 2009 release. So I don't know. So I don't know which one is better, but I guess in a way, I, I love to pick this up to see all the special features included, some new ones, or ones that were released uh, back in 2007 when they added to this uh, special edition, and all this other stuff that they had. Um, but maybe I'll find it someday. You know, I think this movie would look incredibly stunning. So, I mean, I saw this movie when I was a kid. Uh, I remember... Um, my family started renting this movie a lot and I remember watching this at times it creeps me out but but it, nevertheless um, I really followed the story very well I, I love the puppetry that was done by Jim Henson I mean it looks incredibly uh, amazing with all the movements and everything the special effects that they use um, I love the story because it does feel more like an actual dark fairy tale and it shows you know, with the fairies and the dwarfs and all that in there. Um, and this is a movie that eventually became part of my childhood. You know? Because you know, I, I always love watching you know, all these Jim Henson productions of, of any movie or any kind. But that's why it's considered to be a classic. Uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry. I, I'm, I'm, at least I'm explaining it. Um, the movie uh, came out um, in December of 1982 during the holiday season. And, um, and it was also playing in Glendale, too, at uh, Roxy, <laughs> if you saw this picture. Uh, but yes. Um, it was surprisingly a hit. It did have some mixed reviews when it came out, but mostly positive because of the tone and how dramatic it looked compared to all of Hitson's uh, previous works, which is The Muppets. I mean, of course, he just did The Muppet Movie and The Great Muppet Caper and all his other stuff, too. So this was brand new. at the So this was new. For him at the time. Well, anyway, <laughs> and it was released by Universal Pictures, uh, joining in with ITC Entertainment and Henson Associates. Uh, so they put up um, the time and effort to to finance and and be able to make this movie sell well. Okay. Well. Anyway, the movie stars. Um, Stephen Garlick, uh, Lisa Maxwell, Billy Watlaw, and Percy Edwards, um, all of which were voiced by or, puppet, or puppeteered by uh, Jim Henson with Kieran Shaw, um, Catherine Bolin with Kieran Shaw, once again. Um, then they got um, Frank Gauz. Um, and uh, David Goltz uh, joining in. Barry Denning, Michael uh, Glarif, Jerry Nelson, Vic Wilson, Brian Merle, uh, 
Steve uh, Widmeyer, John Bagley, David Buck, and Charles uh, Collinwood, along with Sean Barrett, Richard Slaughter, Jean Pierre Amou, Robert Barnett, and Simon Williamson. Um, written by David Ardell, who's the staff writer of The Muppet Show, with Jim Henson creating the story. And it's directed once again by Jim Henson and Frank Gauss. The movie began set a thousand years ago on a planet called Fra. A powerful dark crystal has been cracked, spreading two new races. Ones are the ugly looking malicious Skelskis, who are using the power of the crystal to continually replenish themselves, while the others are the wizards known as the Mystics. Yeah, the ones that are on their thrones who are basically uh, worm-like uh, creatures are going around appearing just to see how the how one person will be able to find the crystal shard that's been missing and to find a way to put it together and see how how it becomes as powerful as it could be but that's where we meet a young gelfling named Jen who was taken in by the mystics uh, after his entire clan has been savagely killed by the Skelskis, claiming to be the last survivor of the Gelflings. He was told that he must heal the crystal, which can be only occurred if he finds the shard, by an astronomer named Agra, the keeper of secrets, yeah, the one that's a ram-like creature that's, you know, with all that fuzzy hair and she only has one eyeball. Uh, the other eye is missing, so she always takes it out just to see what's going on. And she just puts it back in. <laughs> yeah, that kind of. And this was before, so he has to do that before the Great Conjunction, which is the elicment of the planet Free Suns um, that's going to spread straight from the triangle shape. So. So once they use the crystal, they'll be able to uh, unleash the power. Now, if he fails to, to use... Now, here's the thing. If he fails to do so, the Skelskills, the Skelskills will rule forever. So they'll be able to live. Seeing that... And then Gen Masters actually dies uh, while the Skelskills Emperor dies um, along with it yeah which they fell apart and Jen's master disappears so now uh, they had a f so for the Skelskis um, they had to find their new emperor to take over so now they battle with a war between Chamberlain and the Garfim yeah so they they were on a duel together and they're just going around now using their swords and they're just cutting down a um, both a that rock like um, yeah one yeah that that big rock that they use so that way if one of them can cut it off completely they'll become the new emperor yeah, so Chamberlain tries to do that but he failed and now suddenly his uh, clothes have been stripped off. And yes, this is the one who does the the whippering murmurs like mmm, mmm. Yeah, he does that a lot too. <laughs> so after uh, the golfer master wins, he becomes the throne while the Chamberlain just uh, subsequently exiled. So, and now he just went outside to, to escape. Well, the Skelskis send the Garfin to track him all the way. So anyway, um, Jen reaches uh, Agua and was taking her to her home, which contains an enormous ordery, which shows uh, all the the entire uh, sculptures and stuff of, of the astronomy and everything that she explains. Um, and yes, she did actually have one of the, the shards that she kept and this is where uh, Jen decided to use um, his um, his flutes and playing all the notes to figure out which shard is the one that that can go directly 
through the dark crystal, it turned out to be the middle one. So he took that just long before the Skelskis um, appeared and starts to... T that is until the Garfram appears and, and attacks her home. But she was kidnapped and was taken directly through the, um, the castle where the Skelskis are. Held prisoner. Um, which Jen thought that Agra had died, was killed. But she wasn't. Anyway, but here in the Call of the Crystal, the Mystics had left their valley to travel through the Skelskis castle. And while he was on his journey through the swamp, that's when he meets uh, another Gelfling named Kira. Surprisingly, uh, Jen thought that he was the only one who survived, but at least now we know that there are two. And then they started to have, um, once they uh, held hands, uh, that's where we begin to see uh, dream fasting, you know, focusing on their, their memories that they had, all these flashbacks, you know, when they were just young, and once they grew up, that's when they discover the Skelskis who who slaughtered their families around and all the rest of the other Gelfins. So they even before they actually met, so um, but anyway, Kura was the one who goes around communicating with all the animals. So she's also so um so she's the only one that's alone and and they had to stay for the night with the Paulines who raised uh, Kira after the death of her parents but the Garfrens uh, had raided the entire village captured most of the Paulines uh, while Jen and Kira along with Kira's pet uh, Fizzgig yeah which is like a a furry uh, dog-like creature that they used, that we had, <laughs> that she had. Um, they joined in while the Chamberlain, acting like you know he's he's in the skies, was about to trick uh, Jen, Kira, and Physic to actually take him directly to the castle. So, luckily for Jen, um, he knew that um, he couldn't trust him. So. They just uh, ran off. So now Jen and Kira had discovered that a ruined Gelfine city with ancient writings described a prophecy, which this is where it's quoted. When single shines the triple sun, what was sundered and undone shall be whole. The two made one by Gelfine hand or else by none. Yeah, that's that's quote directly from the prophecy of all these writings around. So anyway, the Chamberlain, of course, uh, did found them and they just ran off. So, they were riding on the Landstriders until they finally arrived at the Skelskis Castle being the, incepted by the Garfims that are attacking Kara's village, so they're going after them and Yes, and this is where um, they fell all the way down to the cliff, and we did learn that Kira actually has wings. And yes, there was a quote in, in the movie that I still remember was that when Jen actually found out that that she had wings, and he says, "Wings? I don't have wings." And Kira just says, "Of course not. You're a boy." <laughs> Yeah, so. so they're trying to find a way to go directly to the lower level entrance uh, to gain access straight through the uh, Skelsis Castle just uh, before you know, Chamberlain just came by and, and it was ready to uh, capture uh, Kira where all these rocks were tumbling down so now uh, Jem was caught uh, along with Physic so now, uh, 
which uh, which then uh, which then uh, Jen starts to call um, earlier enough uh, the scale skids did start to use the the reflector straight from the crystal that they had to send directly down the, on the bottom onto the uh, onto the bottom uh, where all the flames are yeah, and the lava uh, between straight through the lava um, and that's where they tested out on one of the polynes you know just so they can get their uh, the essence so once uh, the scale skits drinks the essence of the podlings as well as the uh, the gelflings which they use it for um, for Kira being captured they're able to become incredibly strong so yes so now they're gonna become more younger than ever before um, while they were using it for Kira that's where um, um, Kira suddenly hears uh, Jens' thoughts and that way she'll find a way to call out all the animals to set them free along with everyone else um, including uh, Agua who was captured so now um, they, they stopped the machine and then everything went, so, every, so now she's doing so now she actually survived for that until um, Jen decided to uh, go all the way on top of the the cliff uh, that's through the lava tried to go all the way up through the castle trying to escape from from those coffins and stuff so he could finally go all the way up on the cliff uh, taking the shard so he'll be able to put it straight into the dark crystal so hopefully when he be able to use the dark crystal while the free suns appear through the uh, the triangle on top of the roof hopefully he'll be able to summon the power you know before it's too late so there you go um but it's definitely a a fantasy that really works um really loved it uh, loved the puppetry that was all done created by uh, the Jim Henson uh, people, you know, they, it was actually done by his creature shop, um, all created uh, using the animatronics. It's very groundbreaking, and they did use a lot of visual effects of some of those scenes here and there. Um, and hey, I mean, the movie was ahead of its time, though, for 1982, because this was long before CGI. So yes, they did use a lot of practical effects uh, to put it all together. And it's amazing. And they also got the narrator, uh, Joseph O'Connor, joining in uh, to narrate the story. So it really explains what happens. Um, some impressive voice acting all the way, along with all the puppeteers joining in. And it's very magical and this is the kind of movie that uh, I recommend um, now I know when I did review uh, Labyrinth uh, back in 2015 I know I did say that The Dark Crystal is a way better film well I mean of course it, it is a better film in between but I still enjoy Labyrinth as it is I mean coming from the story of Maurice Sendek it just has flaws but this one is incredibly flawless so it really does work in several ways and I can understand the movie is pretty dark because that's what it is it's pretty dark you can you know there are kids who I mean kids who actually have seen this movie have been totally frightened by the way the film uh, by the way the film plays out but but in the end it just um, it looks really magical I mean I love the um, the landscapes of of the swamps and the castle and all the other uh, amazing uh, 
Amazing Land, how they how they created this all together. I mean, they, they did this in the studio, actually, in the UK. Um, and it has a bit of a, uh, a Grimm's Fairy Tale classic type of feel to it. So now you can see uh, that they took a lot of uh, time and effort to put them. I mean, yeah, I mean, they had to create a lot of um, details and they had to add all the rocks, they had they used a lot of paintings, they they took um, a lot of time and effort to to add all the sets, designs, and all of that. But it's really amazing, you know, how they did it. I mean, it must have took like hours, maybe months, maybe almost a year to put them all together. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I know. Um, anyway, um, the, the score, of course, was done by Trevor Jones. Uh, it was um, very uh, mystical and very um, soothing and gave it a, uh, they added a lot of acoustic instruments, electronics, and all of that put together to make it sound just right. So, and, um, and yeah. It was already considered to be the highest grossing film of 1982 uh, during the holiday season, uh, joining in with all the other films that were coming out at the time, including the the, the massively successful E.T. the Extraterrestrial that was that came out that summer, and joining in with Tootsie, <laughs> so, yeah, the Dustin Hoffman the comedy. I mean, this is why it's one of the best uh, fantasy films ever made. And rightly so. Um, joining in with all the creators, and, you know, Jim Henson, Frank Oz, Brian Frode, and all the rest. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I know it's uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's just the way I had to try to do my best for this review. I had to say for the Skelskits Skits, though, uh, Chamberlain is actually the funniest one of them all, because he's always going around murmuring, saying, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's always doing that whimpering. <laughs> so I have to admit, he was, he was uh, <laughs> a bit of a comic relief. Um, as for the Gelfings, though, um, I thought Jen was uh, pretty brave at times. You know, he's, he's trying to do his best, even though he doesn't know how, but he's trying to figure it out. And uh, Kira, I thought she was very beautiful, um, incredibly. I mean, she's, she's also strong. I mean, she can call out all the animals. She can do everything that I think, you know, Together, you know, they're about to help um, try to find a way to stop uh, the dark crystal from happening. So the Skelskis will be able to live forever. So hopefully they'll stop them. And of course, I do love the Fizzkid, uh, the furry like dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was cute. Funny too. Yeah. You get it. And I also love Agua too, the keeper of secrets. Yeah, she's just, <laughs> yeah, she she is one tough uh, old woman, and she knows everything. I mean, she is a, she's one of the strongest uh, astronomers of them all. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but she knows something, and that's what she does. <laughs> but nevertheless, the dark crystal. You know, check this out, and also check out the new series uh, that's playing on Netflix. I mean, if you're a huge fan of The Dark Crystal, you'll definitely enjoy the TV series as well. Because it's a very uh, powerful experience. So, I'm going to leave it that way. Um, so anyway, that's The Dark Crystal, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.